Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm going to talk about an important topic, uh, diabetes in the elderly. And life expectancy has been increasing. Advances in medical care and improved social conditions increased life expectancy. Uh, now we come to an important question. Does the epidemic of diabetes involve older individuals? And the answer is yes. By year 2050, there is going to be an increase of 336% in number of diabetics above the age of 75. According to the International Diabetes Federation, the flat prevalence of diabetes now is 8.8% while according to the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, the third one, in persons above the age of 75, the percentage of diabetes is 17.5 to 21%. Diabetes in geriatric times is somewhat different, a different as regards goals of therapy, choice of drugs, different uh, metabolism, and there is usually the danger of hypoglycemia. When we um, investigate the carbohydrate metabolism in the elderly, most studies show there is rise in the blood glucose, especially the postprandial blood glucose, which is directly correlating with age. The fasting blood glucose increases one to 2% per decade while the postprandial blood glucose increases up to 15 milligram per decade. And these changes in metabolism is due to impaired insulin release and delayed suppression of hepatic glucose output. Those are some underappreciated diabetes complications. We can find that diabetes is a risk factor for dementia. It is doubled in the presence of dementia, falls, hip fracture, immobility and disability, including housework, preparing meals and managing money. Also, these are the two main groups of diabetes complications, the microvascular complications and microvascular complications. And in older patients, we can find that uh, coronary artery disease is doubled in diabetics uh, in elderly group and stroke also is doubled. Amputation 10 times increased in older patients than in younger patients. And when we see the microvascular complications, we can find that blindness is increased 1.4 uh, times uh, more than in younger uh, persons. And renal disease twice increased uh, than in younger patients. And also neuropathy is markedly uh, prevalent among uh, older diabetic persons. These are the challenges in management of type 2 diabetes in the elderly. And the first challenge in this question, is there a risk of hypoglycemia or not? Hypoglycemia, it's very prevalent in uh, uh, people with uh, diabetes in the elderly group. And uh, it may lead to impaired cognition. And when we see the symptoms of hypoglycemia in older diabetics, we can find more neuroglycopenic manifestations of hypoglycemia like, like dizziness, weakness, delirium, confusion, compared with adrenergic manifestations happening in younger diabetics like tremors and sweating. These symptoms of neuroglycopenia may be missed or confused for another neurological disease, such as a transient ischemic attack, leading to inappropriate diagnosis and inappropriate management. Hypoglycemia is a major challenge in treatment for diabetics in the elderly. We can find patient risk factors in the form of advancing age, intercurrent illness or comorbidity like liver disease, renal disease, or cardiovascular disease, endocrinal deficiency like thyroid, adrenal, or pituitary disease, loss of normal hormonal uh, counterregulation, and hypoglycemia unawareness. Another group of lifestyle risk factor, poor nutrition, poor nutrition or fasting, prolonged physical exercise, and sometimes alcohol uh, use. There is 
Another important group of drug risk factors like the use of sulfonylurea or insulin use. And there are many drugs causing drug interaction with sulfonylurea. Severe hypoglycemia accounts for 17% of all hospitalizations for type 2 diabetes in the elderly. Uh, geriatric diabetes is accompanied with some unique syndromes, and the first syndrome is diabetic neuropathic cachexia, which manifests by weight loss, depression, painful peripheral neuropathy, and it resolves with no specific treatment. And the second um, uh, disease is diabetic amyotrophy, which occurs in older male diabetics, malignant otitis media, which is a necrotizing infection usually caused by pseudomonas, and pyelonephritis with papillary necrosis. Now we come to an important topic, which is the management of diabetes in the elderly group. And uh, there are two theories. One theory is to uh, make a loose control or um, non-strict control of diabetes and to allow the postprandial blood glucose to reach 200 milligram per deciliter or more. And another theory of euglycemia with a strict blood glucose, uh, fasting blood glucose around 110 and hemoglobin A1C less than 7%. And what to choose of these two uh, theories uh, we can choose according to the life expectancy and to the current medical uh, problem. When we um, discuss the clinical standards, uh, we find that the American Diabetes Associa uh, Association said the following sentence, although age per se should not be an excuse for suboptimal control of blood glucose, it may be answer, I, uh, neither feasible nor appropriate to achieve such tight control in older patients. So the goals should be individualized and the hemoglobin A1C um, is um, less than 8% is reasonable. Uh, according to Diabetes Canada 2019, these are the hemoglobin A1C targets. And for most adults with type 1 or type 2 diabetes, the hemoglobin A1C target is less than 7%. For uh, adults with type 2, to reduce the risk of uh, chronic kidney disease and retinopathy, uh, if there is no risk of hypoglycemia, we can reach a goal of less than 6.5. For elderly diabetics, the target is ranging from 7.1 to 8.5. We can find a, a reasonable target of 7.1 to 8% in functionally dependent patients, and from 7.1 to 8.5 in those with recurrent severe hypoglycemia or hypoglycemia unawareness, in those with limited life expectancy, and in frail elderly with dementia or without dementia. And usually we should avoid higher hemoglobin A1c to minimize the symptoms of hyperglycemia and acute and chronic complications. At end of life, hemoglobin A1c measurement is not recommended, but we should avoid symptomatic hyperglycemia or uh, hypoglycemia. These are guidelines uh, done by the European Diabetes Working Party for older people, and they recommend usually uh, the, the target of fasting uh, glucose of uh, 7.6 to 9 millimole and hemoglobin A1C range of 7.6 to 8.5, and to give the patient a chance of dietary a lifestyle at the beginning, and if the patient is not achieving the target, then he can go to uh, metformin use, and metformin uh, is only contraindicated in renal and hepatic dysfunction, respiratory disease, heart failure or respiratory uh, failure, anorexia and gastrointestinal disease, and if, if these side effects or contraindications are present, we can go to alternative treatment in the form of DPP-4 inhibitors or uh, lower risk uh, sulfonylurea or uh, glenides. 
Now we talk about diet in elderly uh, people with diabetes. Uh, usually there is difficulty to adhere to dietary regime to change the lifestyle in elderly people. And these uh, difficulties are due to financial difficulties, mobility problems, poor food preparation skill, long-standing dietary habits, which we cannot change easily. And um, they may be uh, having difficulty to follow instructions and there is decreased sense of taste. So no strict diet is needed and we can add vitamins and mineral supplements only when we give uh, caloric intake less than 1000 kilocalorie per day. Uh, the sulfonyl urea, 70% of prescriptions for uh, people above the age of 60 with diabetes uh, is uh, sulfonyl urea in the form of sulfonyl urea. And 20% of sulfonyl urea patients develop hypoglycemia due to altered metabolism. And there is decreased response to hypoglycemia due to autonomic dysfunction. So the clear and present danger is no warning symptoms for hypoglycemia. And there's some drug-drug interaction with sulfonyl urea, uh, like beta blockers, salicylate, warfarin, tricyclic antidepressants, and usually glypenclamide is not preferred in elderly people with diabetes. Biguanides can be given except in cases of renal insufficiency, hepatic disease, alcoholism, severe congestive heart failure, and severe peripheral vascular disease. Alpha glucosidase inhibitors, they are safe, but the only disadvantage is severe gastrointestinal disturbance. Cyazolidine dione, the efficacy is similar in elderly diabetic to younger individual, but care should be taken for cardiac function as they may precipitate heart failure. And uh, liver function uh, with organic liver disease is uh, required. In creatine based therapy in old uh, diabetics and DPP4 inhibitors seem to be safe with no risk of hypoglycemia, they are weight neutral, and they seem to be attractive agent to use in elderly, and the dose of GPP-4 inhibitor should be adjusted in patients with renal insufficiency. And this trial was done on Vildagleptin. Uh, it's actually, uh, it's a meta-analysis of 10 trials, uh, more than uh, 12,000 uh, patients, comparing those below the age of 75 and those above the age of 75, and the results showed no hypoglycemia events, severe hypoglycemia, no weight change, and reduction of hemoglobin E1c of 1.1%. Uh, the GLP-1 receptor agonists, um, there is no risk of hypoglycemia, and the most common adverse event is nausea and GIT side effects occurring in 10 to 40% of uh, treated patients. Um, due to concern about renal toxicity, some GLP-1 receptor agonists like exenatide should not be given with creatinine clearance below 30 uh, milli per minute. The SGLT2 inhibitor in the elderly, and we had this trial on dapagliflozin in older individual, either um, above the age of 65 or above the age of 75. And the results showed increased incidence of UTI and genital infection, which was not only in the uh, elderly group, but also in the younger uh, group of uh, diabetic patients. According to Diabetes Canada, uh, gave some uh, short guidelines for uh, diabetes in older people. And these guidelines showed that GPP-4 inhibitors should be used over sulfonyl urea. And the initial doses of sulfonyl urea when given should be half of those doses used for younger patients for fear of uh, hypoglycemia. And glyclazide, glyclazide MR and glimipride should be used instead of glyporate and the meglitinide may be used instead of glycoporate. For basal insulin, DTMER, uh, Glargine U100, Glargine 300, U300, and Deglodec may be used instead of NBH. And the premixed insulins and pre-filled insulin pens should be used 
to reduce dosing errors. Um, when we discuss the problems in insulin therapy, we can find visual impairment uh, leading to medication error, impaired manual ability for insulin injection, and limited access to injection side. And usually the analogs are preferred um, more than the human insulin. And let me um, conclude with uh, Mr. Diabetes, Andrew Mandel. His neuropathy has disappeared after going around 15 US states walking. Um, uh, thank you.